So one day I was playing around, doing a little uh, coding. I'm trying to learn React Native, so this is like super easy tutorial for that. And then I looked over in the corner of my room and thought, you know, it sure would be nice to have like a, a little spot where I could read, like a little piece of furniture that was good for that. So I knew what I had in mind, but I didn't quite know the name for it. So this is me kind of searching for how I would go about finding that. Uh, you know, I was kind of picturing like those longer chair things that you can read on, one person can read on and be very comfortable. So that's kind of what I had in mind. Turns out that thing is called a chase lounge. So I went to kind of see uh, what chase lounges were out there and if I liked any of them. I also wanted something that wasn't super expensive, so that led me to Target. <laughs> and I started looking at the different types, but these look really fancy, like not really my style or what I would go for. They're a little bit, you know, too luxurious looking. Wouldn't really go with my house, which is more like industrially kind of design. So anyway, uh, I couldn't find it right there, so I just typed in the one I ended up finding. <laughs> which was this ginger storage chase lounge. And it looked simple, but the price, I was like, whoa, 4.30 for this? It seems simple, I bet I can build that. Uh, another thing I was kind of trying to do with this project was to learn some different software. So this is called FreeCAD. And I used it to kind of model uh, the design of the chair. And then that way I could get all my dimensions and know how much lumber and supplies I was gonna need, that kind of stuff. So, FreeCAD was great. It reminded me a lot of AutoCAD and uh, SolidWorks. And it's free though, so you don't have to pay that huge licensing fee, which was super nice. <laughs> so that's what it kind of ended up looking, looking like. Um, I made sure it was going to fit in the room. Another reason I needed to build it and not just buy the Target one was because the arm was on the wrong side for the corner that I wanted to put it in. Oh, and you're also going to notice some interesting editing choices because I was also trying to learn what's this called Caden live is how I made this video and edited it so there's gonna be some random uh, just editing things as we go along here because yeah I wanted to try them out and get some experience <laughs> so here was after I'd picked up all my supplies had them cut this two by four and a half then I had a bunch of two by sixes and two by fours, and those are actually two by eights that make up the base. So I was measuring them out. Wanted to make sure I didn't make any stray cuts that were gonna lead to not having enough material because going back to the hardware store is not my favorite thing. <laughs> and this is just gonna be the main base that will actually also act as like a storage kind of container so you can put blankets or bedding or whatever there in the middle. This is the Craig jig that I got and I'm really looking over the instructions here because I've used it incorrectly before. <laughs> so it's actually really important the amount of space between the edge of the board and uh, the start of that jig depending on the thickness of the wood that you're using. You'll really see my camera skills in action here with the putting the camera on the same uh, surface that you're using wouldn't quite recommend since it is going to get a lot of vibration <laughs> but anyway I'm doing this on the fly and I didn't want it to take too long so I just glued and then used the pocket holes and screws for pretty much all of my joinery just kept it pretty simple and I knew I was going to be covering this up with fabric so I wasn't super worried about it looking nice or anything like that finished edges all that Although I did do a bit of sanding and you'll see me taking the edge off um, with the plane here in a minute, just to make sure, you know, there's no snags or anything. Yeah, there I'm going, just taking off the corner so it doesn't tear the upholstery that I'll eventually, or the fabric I'll eventually be upholstering with. Gave it a quick little sand down. Just kind of take the edges off and then my middle one 
wasn't quite flush, so I had to plane that down and sand it a bit. And then my dad came over and gave me a hand. So we're, we knocked out the header, got it all put together, or the backrest. I don't know why I called it a header. Uh, and then figured out how the armrest was gonna go in. For some reason I had this idea that it'd be really cool if the armrest and the backrest could detach. So it might've been easier to just screw them on, but I wanted them both to be able to come apart so that you could move the whole thing more easily. So that kind of made the design a little more complicated, but not bad. I ended up using these, um, you probably know what they were if you saw them. They're hard to describe though. They're like these inset pieces that then you can screw bolts into. So they actually screw into, into the wood, but then the bolts screw into them. So here I'm just kind of putting a board on the side uh, of the armrest that'll be towards where the person's sitting so that then I could put foam right there and it would be a better support. And then for the base, I didn't use any foam. I just glued the batting straight to the wood since you won't actually be like sitting on this part or really feeling it much. <laughs> so I was just using Gorilla, spray, Gorilla Glue spray adhesive, getting the batting all trimmed up. And then the base, I didn't have to do much sewing, just sewed all the edges of the uh, sides together and then upholstered it with staples. So that was probably one of the easier parts of it actually. And eventually I might like get some felt or something to kind of line the inside just to give it a more of a finished look. But for now I just kind of left it like that since this inside part will actually be covered up by the lid most of the time. And then I was kind of curious how you cut this upholstery foam, but it's actually pretty simple. You just take a normal straight edge knife and uh, just go like small slices at a time and eventually you work your way all the way through. And then here I'm attaching the foam to the armrest. I wanted to get that end in, in case someone leaned up against the very end. And then this inside is what I lean up against all the time when I'm reading, so I wanted that to be cushy. And then there was lots of fabric to cut out. So I'd usually figure out where I needed to cut the fabric by first cutting out the batting and getting it all lined up and then putting the batting over the fabric and cutting that with just a little bit extra so that I'd have an edge to kind of sew. Here I'm making the cording or the piping or I even heard it called welting when I was looking up how to do it. <laughs> I had to sew a lot of that because there are a lot of edges along this piece of furniture that called for it, so, or that were in the picture. And then here I'm upholstering the armrest. This is probably one of the more difficult things to upholster. I did not take into account um, like how much my measurements would need to be adjusted for after I upholstered and batted the base. So I actually had to make quite a few adjustments to the armrest to kind of account for that. And then for the foam, I'm just putting on some batting. I think it'll make the foam last a little longer and just kind of give it a nicer look too once the fabric's over it to have some batting in between the instead of just having straight fabric over the foam. So now I'm cutting out the pieces for the actual cushion, the main the main cushion that also doubles as a lid. And then I turned it upside down because I had the fabric inside out to pin on that piping. Um, and sometimes I would pin like the piping and the other piece of fabric at the same time, but since this piece was so big, I did the piping first and then laid the fabric down and also pinned it 
just to make sure everything stayed where I wanted it when I was sewing. I'm not the best seamstress, so it was really important that I uh, do a lot of pinning. And here I'm making the feet. So to make them, I just glued two two by sixes together. And mine were a little warped, so I'm just planing them square here. And then I didn't show it, but I ended up cutting angles on both sides, which you should be able to see kind of in this, the final shot. This actually ended up being one of the hardest parts. Here's where I'm trying to line up the bolts with the like insets uh, that I put in the header and in the base for the armrest. And there's the finished product. I'm trying it out, making sure it'll be good for reading. So here's just kind of an overview shot. You can see all the, where all that piping went. <laughs> the armrest. Yep. Look at those seams. Okay, not quite perfect seams, but. <laughs> I thought not too shabby for first attempt. And then you can kind of see what it looks like with the feet right there too. And then what it looks like when I'm using it. I usually throw down a little pillow. The foam I got was pretty firm, so it's nice to have a, a pillow for the small of your back. And a, and a good blanket, of course. And then the Kindle for reading. And yeah, I have to say I'm pretty happy. It was nice to be able to save some money. This ended up costing uh, about 280 instead of 430, I think it was, on the Target website. So if you don't like building things, definitely it'd be worth it just to purchase it because it did take me about two weeks of working on it on and off. So, but if you like building things and you want to get some experience, um, yeah, I'd say go for it. It was a lot of fun.